Well, thank you very much uh, for that fantastic introduction. It's uh, honestly a pleasure to be here. It's Saskatchewan still feels a little bit like home. I can say that because I'm in Saskatchewan and I'm not in Alberta. Um, but the one thing I am a little bit upset about is uh, when I was invited to come and do this, I did not look at the CFL schedule and the riders are in Ottawa tonight. Uh, so I should have stayed in Ottawa to see the rider game because I'm still a huge rider fan. But I think that's probably why I'm here and Andrew Shear isn't here he's probably at the football game. Um, but I want to thank, uh, introduce as well, uh, Randy Hoback, who's the chair of the Saskatchewan Caucus, member of parliament for uh, Prince Albert. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Randy, for being here as well. Uh, Randy was really critical in, in making sure I was able to be here tonight as well, and I uh, wanted to make sure I had some Saskatchewan beef, and it's almost Alberta beef. It's, it's pretty good. It's okay. <laughs> if, there's some, if there's some cattle guys in here, I'm sorry. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy that uh, this, this started off much better than I anticipated because uh, I thought when I got up here tonight to talk about the carbon tax a little bit that all of you would, would be booing my point of view on the carbon tax. I was, because when I'm in Ottawa, uh, I've heard time and again from our current Minister of Agriculture that farmers across Canada, Canada fully support the Liberals' carbon tax. Um, and I am vehemently opposed to the carbon tax, so I just wanted to make sure that if you are going to boo me because you do support the carbon tax, let her fly right now because <laughs> the agriculture minister seems to believe that you do. No? No big carbon tax supporters? Not one. Excellent. That's good. So I, I guess I'm on the right track and the, our agriculture minister maybe is misinformed and we will continue to pass on that message uh, to Minister McCauley. Now I joke a little bit about, about the carbon tax but uh, we've been doing a lot of work, myself and, and Randy and some of our colleagues, with uh, some agricultural ridings. Um, and the numbers from the Parliamentary Budget Officer, even though we've been asking uh, the Prime Minister and the Agriculture Minister to come clean and tell us, you know, I, I think farmers and ranchers and uh, our producers and our agri-food processors deserve, uh, they've earned the right to know what this carbon tax is going to cost them. Uh, and I know uh, my good friend, uh, the Agriculture Minister Stewart, is going to do everything he possibly can to, uh, to fight this with, uh, with Premier Mo, and uh, hopefully we'll have some, some support in Alberta in a year from now with uh, Jason Kenney. And now we have some more allies in, uh, in Ontario with Doug Ford, which is great. Um, but they've been obviously very uh, stingy with coming out with the numbers of what the carbon tax is. But I want to, the numbers that we put forward now that the Parliamentary Budget Officer has broken down the numbers of the, what the carbon tax will cost agriculture. The average wheat farmer in Saskatchewan, on an average farm, is going to see a bill of $20,000 a year in carbon taxes. $20,000. A rancher in Alberta, $13,000. A pork producer in Manitoba, $36,000. You're a potato farmer in Prince Edward Island? Don't worry. The agriculture minister hasn't forgotten about you either an additional $20,000 in carbon taxes each and every year. These are the numbers that the Parliamentary Budget Office put forward. These are the uh, numbers that we know are going to be impacting you in your business uh, every single day starting in January of 2019. Now your group has been exceptionally vocal when it comes to issues that are impacting you and I want to thank uh, the work that you have done and I hope that you will continue the work that you've done on the carbon tax and, and fighting against the carbon tax which you have uh, you and your members have been extremely vocal on and I appreciate that because we can, as members of Parliament, Randy and I, we, we can do so much, um, but we, we want to be there to be augmenting your voice and talking about the, the issues that are important to you. And that's why it was so important for us to be here today. Is, you know, we, we rose yesterday, I'm on my way back to Alberta, but I wanted to stop here at the Farm Progress Show. It was an opportunity for me to speak with you know, literally dozens of, of uh, agriculture manufacturers downstairs. Uh, it's an opportunity for me to speak with you tonight and get the pulse of how you're feeling about some of these issues that are really impacting you. Uh, the carbon tax, NAFTA, CPTPP. Uh, I heard today that uh, India has increased tariffs on our pulses again uh, today. These are some of the issues that, that we are dealing with. Uh, the grain backlog over this, over this winter. Um, and I, I don't want to be the one that bring bad news, because I'm sure you know all of these things of which I'm talking about. But it just seems like every single tool that you have to be successful in your business, on your farm, or your ranch, our current 
federal government is trying to do everything they can to remove those tools. They don't understand the profound impact that agriculture has on our Canadian economy. They don't understand the importance of rural economics to the whole of the country. And I, I would like to, to point back to one, where, one issue where you do have to take a lot of, uh, a lot of thanks on our behalf. And that was the, the small business tax changes that came up last fall. Um, and I want to be honest with you. This was uh, some, some tax changes where obviously, as you know, we're going to make your succession planning very, very difficult, more difficult, uh, increase your taxes. But this was really targeted to doctors, lawyers, accountants. Um, and probably most of us really wouldn't have cared if they increased taxes on doctors, lawyers, and accountants. But when small business owners and farmers and ranchers stood up and said, enough, this is going to be the end of the family farm in Canada, that's when the narrative started to change. So thank you to each and every one of you in this room. We could not have gotten them to back down on these changes were it not for the work that you all did. Uh, Megs, you're doing your videos. Uh, for those of you doing, doing letters to MP ridings, uh, to your MPs, for those of you who sent letters to the Prime Minister and the Finance Minister, thank you for everything you did. Because of your efforts, it forced them to back down. But I also want to say that as part of that, that the fight isn't over. Uh, we've now seen, and many of you have, if, if you have uh, shareholders in a, in a business that you've got with a group of your, uh, your friends and neighbours, be it a, a terminal, a seed cleaning plant, that you've now lost your small business tax deduction. Uh, because you are not a co-op. Uh, so this is the next fight that we're going to be having when we get back in the fall. But in conclusion, I just really wanted to talk to you about some of these issues that we're, we're dealing with right now. I encourage you uh, to reach out to us going into the fall. There are some issues that we're going to be dealing with. The grain grading is one for sure. Carbon tax, uh, the food guide, front of pack labeling, which some of you may or may not be familiar with. These will be devastating to agriculture. Uh, the front of pack labeling will be yet another non-tariff trade barrier with the United States and will further be an irritant where we're trying to renegotiate NAFTA, uh, trying to get the, the CPTPP signed. These are some of the things we'll be focusing on uh, in the fall when we get back in session. But I just want to say thank you very much for all the work that you have done over this past year to help us get that message across, whether it be the carbon tax, small business tax changes, C49, uh, the transportation bill and the grain backlog. We can't do it without you, so continue uh, to reach out to us because we know, uh, and Andrew Shear, our leader, knows, because that's why he has two of us. There's actually two shadow ministers in agriculture, myself and Luc Bertold in Quebec, because we understand how integral agriculture is to the Canadian economy and how important it is uh, for our rural communities to be successful. But we want to hear from you uh, next fall. Thank you for all that you've done this year, but also thank you for everything you do each and every day the blood, sweat, and tears that you put in to ensure uh, that we not only feed our, our friends and our neighbours and our country, uh, but we feed people around the world. Thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to uh, hearing uh, Premier Mo and everything he has to say about his support uh, for the federal carbon tax. So thank you very much.